Hello everybody, it's Max with Crypto Talk now. You feel that? You feel that? It's the power trying to come back on. Well, no, it's not a T-Rex. But that's what the sound of a crypto boom cycle feels like. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's news coverage. That is the boom cycle. So I saw this and I said to myself, you know what? This is something else. You know, we saw a lot of indicators basically supporting this particular thesis or just that a boom cycle so what is it all about and what does it entail well if anything check this out so for one basically speaking you know cryptos are absolutely about to do what they're about to soar and we've seen them soar even that much more so within the last week or so you know um, to start off the year you know you have for instance Bitcoin and ethereum both are basically up 20% while Cardano is up 36% to say the least. And on top of that, yeah, even Solana up 83%. So with all the rallies going on, you know, it's not going to slow down. And some people say, well, you know, Max, you know, this is not the real true bear mar or bull market. Um, there's not enough indicators. You yourself have even said that, you know, unless we get two weeks straight, we're not quite there yet. Well, I'm with you for the most part, but here what we have to present to you when it comes to just that. You know, for instance, as we put out this particular video, we've seen Bitcoin go from 19,000 uh, as high as 21, even touching the 22s, right? And, you know, it just doesn't stop there. You know, for instance, you know, as we see on this particular graph, take a look at it for yourself. It's really, really something. So cryptos are off to a red hot start in 2023, to say the least. Now, on top of that, this is as hot as cryptos have been during the bear market. Yes, we had multiple counter trend rallies over the past year, but let's face it, none of them were like this specific one. On top of that, you know, an example would be that Bitcoin has now retaken its 200 day moving average for the first time in this bear market and that's one of the key takeaways here that is in all of the previous counter trend rallies of the past year bitcoin never retook its 200 day moving average now though it has basically uh, gone through what is referred to as underscoring of why this rally feels like the quote unquote big one yeah that one and with that also said, at the same time, Bitcoin has now broken above its bear market downtrend line for the first time in this particular cycle. On top of that, not to mention, the descending triangle convergence pattern we have shown you multiple times over the past few months is now breaking. How much so? Well, instead of Bitcoin basically breaking down, out of these triangle convergences, Bitcoin instead, for the first time in this bear market, is breaking out of a descending triangle convergence. You can see it basically right here. All right, on top of that, meanwhile, over in equity land, right? Basically, uh, the stock market has just triggered a breakaway momentum. Yeah technical indicator for the first time in this particular bear market. That's an ultra rare price momentum indicator, which gets triggered basically when the number of 10 day advancing stocks in the New York Stock Exchange, for instance, is more than two times greater 
and the number of 10-day declining stocks in the New York Stock Exchange. The indicator basically has only been triggered 24 times since World War II. That's something else. On top of that, each time stocks rallied over the next 6 to 12 months for average returns of more than 20%. And here's an outline specifically in regards to that. The SPX forward tendency after a breakaway momentum signal. And you see some of this right here, dating all the way back to, what, 1949. Year after year, you see what has been going on. All right. So basically speaking, everything, everything about the current Bitcoin breakout feels different than the previous breakouts, right? So we have gone ahead and retaken the 200-day. And on top of that, the downtrend resistance basically shows that it has been broken. Yeah, broken. The ascending triangle pattern is resulting in a specific breakout, not just a breakdown. Top of that, stocks are acting like they are about to do what? They're about to enter a new bull market. Now, I understand that this seems like it's a very unpopular thing to say. And I have stated in the past, through previous videos, and even on the live, I realize I'm in the minority. But let's not forget, for instance, the macros are meaningfully improving, to say the least. Inflation is falling, and the Fed is slowing down, despite whatever some people may have to say about that. We got based it on some of the data. Now, in regards to the economy, right, it's stabilizing. Yeah, it has been. How do we know that? Well, for instance, the Treasury yields are falling. Geopolitical tensions in Ukraine, for instance, are easing. China is reopening. On top of that, uh, it's just you see, for instance, there's a counter trend rally in cryptos. And it's not just another counter trend rally. It's the counter trend rally, to say the least, to kick off this year, 2023. It's the start of what is referred to as a new boom cycle. And for the last few months, we have outlined in numerous different parts and segments about these four-year boom cycles and how we should basically follow it closely. Now, as I mentioned before, and especially when it comes to our particular coverage that we bring to you from a premium service referred to as Investor Place. Now, they don't pay us or anything like that. But it's an annual subscription that I get. And if anything, these guys have been right like literally nine times out of ten. We're talking about people who, you know, for instance, Luke Lango went to Caltech. You know, last I checked, you got to be pretty smart to go to that particular school. He's worked for the Los Angeles Dodgers in regards to data analytics, as well as the Philadelphia 76ers. And also, Charlie Shrem, who happens to be a person that's been into Bitcoin since $5. But check this out. So is this tendency to be followed, you know, what is referred to as a quasi-predictable boom-bust-boom pattern? Well, get a little bit more into that specifically. So in regards to all this, these cycles tend to be quite hyperbolic. Hyperbolic? Really? Well, hear me out. During bust cycles, for instance, cryptos are crushed like they have no future. None. During boom cycles, they soar like they've been taking over the world, to say the least, right? The key to being a successful crypto investor, even though it's not financial advice, then is to invest in cryptos specifically when bust cycles turn into what? Boom cycles. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, we're checking all, all the boxes, and they've been consistent with a transition from just that. A bus cycle to what? A boom cycle. Typically speaking, when it comes to Bitcoin, about 80% of that falls during a bus cycle. We dropped, as of recently, about 75% at the low. Boom. Let's check that off. These bus cycles, for instance, tend to last about 50 to 60 weeks. We are around just that. The 60 weeks into the current bus cycle. Check that off. On top of that, bus cycles tend to end and a new boom cycle tends to start about 12 to 16 months before having. 
were 15 months before the fourth Bitcoin halving. Check. All right, let's get a little bit more further into this. So with that said, everything that we basically mentioned, bus cycles also to tend to end once M2 money supply growth starts turning up. Well, how about that? That's about to turn up over the next few months. Add another check mark. All right. Given all this evidence, we strongly believe that we are now entering into a fourth crypto boom cycle. Again, this is based off of data provided by who? Investor Place. And as you can see right here, here it is. Now on this particular one, you see, for instance, Bitcoin's boom cycle slash bus cycle. Cryptos follow a predictable repeating pattern of booming and busting. And right now, we're going from a bus cycle to just that, a boom cycle. Now, in regards to investor plays, they suggest now is the time, basically, to start getting aggressive with cryptos. That's what they're stating. I can't give you any official financial advice. But that's why we are in the process of putting together, or I should say they are, a special research report which will include their top cryptos to buy for the coming boom cycle. Well, let's face it. We already know some of these specific ones are what? Some of these specific ISOs or ones that are in that particular tier list, if you will. If you follow me on Twitter, for instance. Pinned, I have Crypto Cheat Sheet 2.0. Another good one to follow, basically, is the QFS of the quantum financial system. And you could look that up yourself specifically on CoinMarketCap, or just simply go to Google, type in QFS financial system, comes right up with specifically the link to CMC. Or you just type in QFS financial system, CMC, it takes you right to it. So, you know, for instance, Investor Place has been saying for weeks that they plan to launch a big altcoin buying spree once uh, they have been exceedingly confident that we are, in fact, indeed entering a new boom cycle. And there's a lot of indicators to show just that. Now, in regards to some of this specifically, uh, they feel as though that we are at that point right now. Therefore, they're going ahead and they're putting together a special research report that they basically plan to, within the next month or so, go on an altcoin buying spree. Me personally, I'm looking at these ones while they are still on sale right now. Because the way I look at it is, why would I want to wait for them to boom and get them at those particular But you got to do what you got to do, to say the least. Well, let's face it, there's going to be a sense of FOMO coming in, especially when it comes to these particular altcoins and so on. And people tend to do this. Now, in regards to all this, the fourth crypto boom cycle is basically upon us. And that's just it. You know, that's why we bring you guys this particular information to, to say the least. And it's time to take advantage of that. That's the way I personally look into it. Again, it's not financial advice. But that also said, I want to show you guys another thing that is going to be a continuation of what I already presented in regards to just that, what could very well be the start of the bull market. So despite popular belief when it comes to crypto being separate from, let's face it, the stock market, that could be furthermore from the case. We eventually get to the point where stocks basically uh, are in their own separate land, if you will. Uh, where basically crypto isn't affected. Well, maybe at some point we get to that, but if anything, I think uh, that'll be out way further in the future. You know, basically we have to have at least 50% adoption. But even with that said, typically speaking, when it comes to anything, when it comes to currency and so on, whether it's alternate forms and whatnot, usually speaking, the stock market has an overlay, if you will, when it comes to affecting the likes of any type of foreign exchange or let's face it cryptocurrency so without further ado we're going to go ahead and jump right into this and here's the key takeaway all right this is going to be the of course the last part of this particular segment and that is as inflation dies a new bull market is emerging 
And what do I mean by that? Well, investors who own the rights, for instance, of stocks, will make fortunes when its bull market takes off. And that's, again, one of the key takeaways. How do we know that? Well, we base it on history, right? And if anything, there's enough indicators to support this particular thesis. And I get it. I could be absolutely wrong on this. But so far, I've been right while the majority has stated that I'm full of malarkey. I basically have also stated that uh, I feel as though there's enough evidence to show during around in this time, you could go look into it for yourself, that I felt as though um, getting into towards the end of 2023's first quarter um, slash, you know, start of Q2 is when the bull market would basically start happening. Um, in reality, uh, we're not quite into the bull market yet. I want to see at least two solid weeks, but we're approaching that second week here soon. So with that said, again, a lot of this information that I'm providing you guys comes from Investor Place. No, I'm not, you know, being paid by them and so on. But again, this is a premium service that I love sharing with you guys. So. Let's go ahead and, like I mentioned, get a little bit more into some of the nitty gritty in regards to all this. Now, in a new bull market, especially, you tend to see things like housing, right? We talk about this, especially dating back to early 2022, right? Roughly right around March, April 2022. Um, you saw housing, you saw airline, you saw copper, for instance, and industrial stocks leading the rally. Now, specifically, meanwhile, there's things like you know energy, utility, and healthcare stocks who tend to lag behind. One of the key things to look into is why we feel that that's exactly what's going on today. You know, still happening this day. But typically, when inflation rises sharply, right, stocks plummet, and that is true. Um, and we basically, of course, saw that in 2022 with what crypto winter. Now, conversely, when it falls sharply. Then basically you have stocks that tend to do what? They rock it. And again, that's another thing we're going to point out here in a bit. Now, inflation is collapsing before our eyes right now. A lot of people don't agree with that. But if you look more into it, it is going on, which again, is going to support this particular thesis. Now, stocks tend to rally about 20% in the 12 months after inflation peaks. And that is true if you uh, basically look a little bit more into it yourself. Um, stocks, of course, are off to a hot start in the new year. How do we know that? Well, we got based on what's going on with the S&P 500. And I know here at Crypto Talk now, I don't really talk about stocks that much. But if anything, I use it as a point of reference to give us indicators on what to expect going into what is potentially going to be a bull market here soon. Now, we're only eight trading days into uh, 2023, right? Um, actually, technically, by the time you get this, a little bit more into that. Um, and yet the S&P 500, for instance, is already up about 4%. I said eight days. In reality, where was it like a couple of weeks? You know, I was basing on some other figures I was looking at. Now, in regards to the NASDAQ, they're up even more, to say the least. Um, they're up 5% gain year to date. And our core innovation uh, investor, or I should say through Investor Place, um, they have a portfolio which is basically up about 8% at the same time. I'm not going to be able to provide you that specific data because that's private, I guess you could say, information from the previous service. If you happen to have the service, you can look into it yourself. I wish I could provide you the link in the description in regards to that. But they already have, for instance, a few stocks that really popped off more than 30% in 2023. Now, if you're wondering what exactly is happening here and why am I even mentioning this, just hear me out. Now, a new bull market is emerging from this. And, you know, feel, some people feel like, no, Max, not quite there yet. But in a new bar, bull market, for instance, you're going to specifically see things like housing, right? Airline, copper, and industrial stocks that will lead the rally. Meanwhile, energy, utility, and healthcare stocks tend to lag behind. That's exactly, of course, what they're seeing here today in regards to investor place specific coverage. And again, I do bring you guys the specific information because it has been in correlation with what's going on, let's face it, in crypto. So year to date, industrial stocks are up 5%. That's a key thing I want you to take from this, all right? I myself, I was thinking about selling this particular house back in last spring for roughly about 400K. Uh, Phoenix, you know, we had a housing boom and so on. Many other places throughout the country had, a, uh, I should say, a housing shortage, not a housing boom. 
Um, on top of that, housing basically went up 10%. Uh, copper stocks jumped 16%. Airline, you know, you get where I'm going with this. Uh, they were up a whopping 18% to say the least. Um, in regards to energy, if you happen to be that type of person who invested in energy, you know, stocks, uh, not just crypto, those particular ones have risen less than 2% and healthcare stocks basically have gone nowhere. Now, I'm going to show you this particular chart that shows all these specific ones, right? You have the uh, SBDR, S&P Home Builders uh, price and percentage and change. You got the U.S. Global Jets uh, ETF, just price, you know, percentage of change uh, and some of these other ones that we basically mentioned global x in regards to copper miners vanguard industrials iShares, global healthcare so on for, so forth right you have energy select sector uh, utility select sector it's all here right and of course you have the color coordinations of every one i specifically mentioned again here it is and um it gives you that particular outline let's just give, take a moment to look at that now that's typical new bull market price action. And I couldn't possibly agree more. Now, we are seeing this price action. Why? Because the, the uh, incoming, I should say, economic data is strongly suggesting that inflation is dying. And whether you, you know people want to be on par with that or not, some people are say, no, that's wrong. Again, I would highly advise you to look more into it. Okay? Now, how is a bull market emerging from this well specifically speaking if inflation is the enemy and which it is of the stock market then typically speaking when it rises sharply stocks specifically will do what they will plummet yeah they'll plummet conversely when inflation sh falls sharply then we know that stocks tend to rocket so therefore if inflation is doing just that then it's doing what it's collapsing right now as we speak yesterday when i specifically yesterday but you know within the recent days we learned that fast or uh, based on last december statistics consumer prices fell month over month they dropped 0 0.1 percent yeah hear me on this 0 0.1 percent from november and that monthly drop in the consumer price index basically meant that we are exceptionally rare right they only happen about every few years but keep in mind when they do they always signal that inflation is dying and I, this is where I want to draw some of your attention to so take a look at this for yourself I'm gonna go ahead and get it just lined up perfectly so it says negative monthly inflation readings are rare and they always signal more disinflation basically on the way and you can see some of how this is broken down you know this comes from uh, uh, basically the CPI um, index and you see how it is even on the year on year index and this dates all the way back to 1975 to of course present now on top of this it says you know sure headline inflation basically uh, the inflation rates in December were still 6.5% year over year, but that was a 70 point, or I should say 70 basis point slowdown from November's inflation rate. Now, in regards to that, that in itself was a 60 point slowdown from what? October's inflation rate. At this rate of disinflation, hear me out, 60 to 70 points. Of disinflation per month headline year over year inflation rates will do what they're going to drop to two percent by June and of course we'll reflect back on this if you want in the future but it is just that and if anything I'm gonna bring you back to this particular uh, chart take a look at it for yourself it says the current rate of disinflation puts us at two percent inflation by June of 2023 and again Let's just take a moment to look at this a little bit more. I wish I could zoom in more. This is the most I can do. So, yeah, the current rate of disinflation puts us at a 2% inflation by June of 2023, well before current consensus expectations. Makes you think. All right, going further down. Forget what you're hearing on TV. Yeah, let's face it, a lot of times when it comes to TV, you get the likes of Jim Cramer. 
telling you to do one thing, you should be doing the opposite of him because he's been wrong. So forget what you hear on TV or reading in the paper. The data says inflation is crashing fast. That's why stocks are soaring in 2023 so far. And while they'll keep soaring for the next, excuse me, 12 months at least, right? So in regards to all this, stocks tend to soar, as we know, in the 12 months after inflation peaks. And it's been pretty consistent based on what we've seen years past and even decades past. Average returns are going back to the 1920s. That's, of course, where people feel as though we have doom and gloom because, of course, what happened in 1929 and then, of course, what happened after that was the Great Depression. And I get it. This is where a lot of people feel as though, Max, you're full of malarkey. This is why I feel as though we're going to go through a second, you know, Great Recession or some people even call it, you know, the second Great Depression coming up. But are we? Well, let's get a little bit more into that. So basically, when we go back to the 1920s, right, that was about 12 percent, say at least. And that includes the Great Depression, like I mentioned, and the 2008 financial crisis, right? The Great Recession. The only two times, basically speaking, in history where stocks have crashed after inflation basically peaked, um, and we have neither condition present today, is just that. Those two specific times. Now... When we get further into our particular coverage, I want to outline some of this. And that is, excluding those two specific times, stocks tend to rally about, listen, that's 20% in the 12 months after inflation peaks. And that, in my whole opinion, is what we're betting on. At least that's what I'm betting on. Now, I'm going to show you this particular chart as well. And check a look or take a look at it. This dates all the way back to 1929. You have a pretty good perspective on how this is going. And of course, you see some of these particular ones that you see here on specific quarters, how much they had gains, and of course that particular average. Even down uh, all the way towards what quarter two, 2022, so on. All right. Put simply, because let's face it, we need to put simply at this point. When inflation crashes, stocks do what? They pretty much always soar about 12 or about 12 months. And that is really exciting for somebody like me, you, and a lot of other people. Inflation is crashing right now, so it is very likely that stocks are going to do what? They're going to soar over the next 12 months. In fact, Given the dynamics at play today, we think, well, at least investor plays for the most part, that will be a record year, or this, I should say, will be a record year for the stock market. If anything, I believe that this will be a standout year for the likes of crypto. I feel like there's still a lot of opportunity. A lot of people feel as though, no, Max, is 2024, 2025. That's when everything is going to really be uh, amazing to say the least and i'm with you guys for the most part but to say that there's no opportunity in 2023 i just don't think that's the case i'm just going to be honest with you guys about that um at investor place they basically feel as though that we're in store for a 30 percent or bigger rally on deck on top of that and this mega rally that almost no one sees coming certain stocks will soar listen to this 100 percent 200 percent or even 500 plus over the next 12 months alone now again i understand that stocks but every single time in my two years plus of altcoin trading experience, I've seen it time and time again where if the stock market does well, crypto also does well. This whole thesis that we're separate from it, we're not there yet. You can know that, and I know that, and especially even the guys who've been in crypto a lot longer than me. Now, with that said, investors who own the right cryptos are going to see, for instance, that utility being put into place and this is why i believe is that we're really really soon to see the utility run i keep talking about specifically this specific utility run why i always am passionate about the talking about the likes of quant xrp xlm and a few of these other ones heck we've been covering a lot about for instance albt uh for instance lcx so on and so forth i think those really really stand out ahead of the pack 
And of course, um, you know, there's some other really, really good ones like H bar. Look out for H bar, for instance, with what's going to happen here at Davos, right, with the World Economic Forum here soon. I feel as though, and again, this is not financial advice, when H bar, we have Lehman Baird and some of these other guys basically give their quote unquote pitch, if you will, in front of the whole world. H bar is definitely going to be one of those ones, in my opinion, does at least a 2x from there. Again, I'm not giving you guys financial advice, but they are all about being pro green. Even Algo is pro green. Think about what the World Economic Forum is trying to solve. Being just that, pro green, whether people are on par with that or not. It just makes sense. So, in regards to all this, I want to state this. I showed you guys, for instance, that you know some of these particular things they're connected to how the stocks have been poor for in the past. It's on, dating all the way back to the 1920s. Now, specifically, before we close this out in regards to our particular coverage with this bull run thesis, and that is this. Is it 2008 all over again? And if it is, think about what happened with Bitcoin, right? You could have, for instance, uh, during that time, was it 2007, 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto? Whether that's a collective body of people or one person wrote what? The Satoshi White Paper. That was something that emerged, if you will, from that particular time. 14 years ago, listen to this, a rare divergence anomaly turned market volatility into back-tested gains of 2,150%, 591%, and even 861% during the 2008 financial crisis. Of course, we've been in quite a bit of a crisis uh, for a while now, especially in 2022, right? I'm talking about especially, you know, crypto winter, right? Let's not forget the pandemic, so on and so forth. Is this happening again? Well, looks like it could very well be. And think about this. I've stated this many times before. The most amount of wealth creation to date in the 21st century came out of what? It came out of that particular time period. Are we about to enter into the second wave? I think as though we may very well be. There's great innovators that have been building in the crypto winner, bear market. Want, HBAR, LBT, LCX, you name it. So with that said, everybody, I want to thank you for joining us for this particular coverage. Let me know what you guys think in regards to this. Am I still full malarkey? Are you not on board? Well, if anything, I've been right so far, but nonetheless, I could take the constructive criticism. And if anything, guys, I think it's going to be an exciting time here soon. So please enjoy the content that we provide here at Crypto Talk now. Like, comment, subscribe, and by all means, hit that bell notification. And on top of that, if you happen to enjoy, a live show you can check us out every single day of the week at 9 p.m eastern 6 p.m pacific for crypto talk now y'all have a blessed day everybody we'll see you on the next one